So guys, what I have for you in this one is a two-parter. But both parts are essential, and the first part really helps to exemplify the humiliation of Donald in the second. Because what we have are a whole bunch of people at Fox, and some of them are trying to sugarcoat it, because they don't want to get yelled at by Trump, they don't want to get assaulted by Trump in the MAGA goons, so they're trying to be careful. Basically saying that while, oh, they feel really sad for Donald Trump and it's just not fair, none of his rich buddies, none of them, are willing to give him or loan him the money to pay his bond. Because you'd think, okay, Donald Trump has rich friends. Why don't a bunch of his rich friends do a kind of billionaire crowdfunding, billionaire GoFundMe to give him money? And the people on Fox are making it clear why. Before it's demonstrated, again, one of the reasons why is that they don't trust Trump to pay them back because he's broke. And even if he wasn't broke, Donald Trump doesn't pay his bills. But also... It's because he's so unhinged, and he was so unhinged that I also have footage of Fox cutting him off in the middle of a live speech, and it is insane what they said in response. We also have, as a bonus, a, an example of how Republicans are starting to stand up to Trump and getting massive applause doing so. A couple things from from the Trump land. Uh, they're they're continuing to talk to um, banks and insurance companies to try try to get that bond to, to get it at a reasonable uh, amount of money that he can put up. Uh, as of yet, none of his billionaire friends are poning up money, from what I understand. I've been asking them. I mean, there are a lot of them. I mean, Bernie Marcus today, uh, the former Home Depot founder, wrote an op-ed saying the country needs to rally around Trump. Um, you know, as of now, I, I, I don't think Bernie's Bernie's worth six billion. I don't think he's given any what, money. What yet. is behind their reluctance? Well, it's as of now. So right. well, let's I see. That. I mean, are it, they it afraid could, that they change. might not see it anytime right. soon? The money, if he even succeeds on appeal, uh, what, what, what's what's? Yeah, the I mean that's that's one thing. I mean, I think I don't want to you know I don't want to speak for Bernie Marcus. That's sure. for sure. But uh, but just generally, John, Donald hasn't doesn't have a great record at paying back banks over the years. And uh, Donald Trump. So you, uh, you know, you can sort of surmise from that what you what you will. But if you think about it, he has friends or did like Steve Schwartzman over at BlackRock. He has, uh, you know, Tom Barrick, the hedge fund billionaire. I mentioned Bernie, uh, Howie Lorber. I mean, go down the list. You got to ask yourself why they're not throwing him some bucks now, you know, lending him some money. And maybe they will. But or maybe they're so afraid of retribution from Letitia James's office. I mean, yeah, and the better part good, of valor is to stand back. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Although, listen, she runs the New York AG's office, which has tremendous power because yeah. they have some because she has something known as the Martin Act, which can really go after a lot of businesses. It's it's and and the bar for intent is very low. So that's that's one thing. But some of these folks don't have really a lot of business in New York. I mean, Howie Lorber does, but uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what the other ones. You know, Bernie's essentially retired. So, uh, you know, there is that there's that issue. There's another issue here, though. And this could be really interesting. Um, you know, Trump's properties, if he has to if he has to turn them over to her because he doesn't have the he doesn't have the cash for a bond are encumbered by a lot of weird stuff. Partnerships, limited partnerships. You know, there is a thought here in Trump land. Let's give her the properties and let this genius figure it out about unwinding these things and figuring out which part of these buildings is Trump's and which part is a, a limited partnership that isn't Trump. And then, you know, let's see if she could figure that out. Never sugar brother like the Hunter Biden does. Judge, there's never been, no, there's yeah, never been a, a bond this, this high in the I history of the United States. I think this is the time to talk about how uh, Joe Biden lies, because that's how Jessica would answer this question. Well, Jessica, look, just here's the bottom line. It's more than four hundred and fifty four million dollars. It's one hundred and twenty percent of that. That is almost a half a billion dollars in cash. Give me a break. And I'll tell you why they don't want to take a risk and give them that money. The reason they don't want to take a risk and do that is because they this this market, this real estate market in New York is very, very vulnerable. Nobody knows what the valuations are worth anymore. New York is now a crime ridden city. There is crime all over, immigrants all over. They're about to go bankrupt because of the immigrants.
patterns in the hotels and all the areas of New York City. And there's another reason. Not only is New York unstable because of the Democrats who've literally destroyed this city, but because of the fact that people in business fear Letitia James. They fear an absolutist, authoritarian, totalitarian, I will get him. If I ran for office under that line, they would have had me out on ethics grounds before I even made it to the office on the first day. But let, let me say one thing. No private company has ever been faced with this kind of money that they had to put up in order to appeal. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand this is just so he can appeal. If he doesn't come up with a half a billion dollars in cash, he can't appeal the case, which on Eighth Amendment grounds of the Constitution is an excessive fine by anyone's analysis. And finally, the thing, and I heard this today, is maybe it's time for him to go to federal court on this Eighth Amendment claim so that he gets some kind of repose or something that gives him the chance to hold on for a minute. And by the way, her, her drooling, I look at 40 Wall Street, everything, that is beneath the Office of Attorney General. Stop being so trashy in the way you approach this defendant and in the way that you approach the resolution of this. Greg Gutfeld. You know, I'm old enough to remember when the Democrats predicted... Quality man introducing his mother, who's incredible, by the way. But I said, Tim, Tim, I said, I called him up. He took everybody. He had like five of the worst human beings interviewing him, trying to hit me. He said, Donald Trump did this, he did that. He did criminal justice reform. He did the, and by the time he finished with him, they just wanted to get off the set. And I said, he's a much better representative for me than he is a representative for himself. And it's true. And that's a great compliment. And you know why? Because he's a high quality person. He doesn't like talking about himself. It's true. I love that. No, I came into arena three weeks ago, a big arena. You know, we won in Iowa in a record. You know, Nikki, this guy, Nikki, she loses to Biden in virtually every poll. She talks, she has one poll that's so old now that paper is turning and nobody ever heard of the poll. She loses to Biden in all the polls. But forget that. This guy, I want to get, he's far more interesting. So we won, we won Iowa in a landslide in a record, the likes of which has never been seen. In fact, we took the record and they doubled it. We won by that margin. We then went to New Hampshire. We got more votes than anybody in the history of New Hampshire, the New Hampshire primaries, which they've been around a long time. And I heard Nikki today said, well, yeah, I lost two. No, she lost four, because she lost the Virgin Islands, which she tried like hell to get. We won that, too. A lot of people don't know that. But then we went to Nevada. All right, we're continuing monitoring of the president's remarks, and I mean no offense to him, or some of you might want to continue hearing, but I did have to say that even though the former president is entitled to his opinions, He's not entitled to his own set of facts. The market has indeed been going up, but having nothing to do with him and everything to do with this aggressive cut in interest rates uh, or just a hiking in interest rates and stabilized inflation. And, of course, the whole uh, artificial intelligence phenomenon that has benefited NVIDIA and a host of companies that are making money hand over fist. So that uh, whether you want to give Biden credit for that has nothing to do with Donald Trump. Furthermore, he mentioned about gas prices out of whack, six dollars a gallon. The national average right now is three dollars, twenty six uh, a cents a gallon. He went on to talk about the uh, 2020 election and how that was rigged. Uh, this has been adjudicated many, many times, dozens of times. It's been investigated uh, by everyone and his uncle. No fewer than 44 investigations launched, some of them by judges that were uh, picked by Donald Trump himself that found no evidence of that in the seven battleground states where most of them were focused. Donald Trump lost each and every one of those states and no facts or no hits. You had no trouble with North Korea, did you? No trouble whatsoever. Started a little bit rough, right? Rocket man, little rocket man. <laughs> he said, we've got a red button on my desk, he said. I said, I have a red button also, but mine's bigger, better, and it works. Mine works. <laughs> and then, no. 
Well, the former president finally got around to some campaign promises amid lots of cheering, as you heard. Many untruths. The 2020 election was not rigged. It was not stolen. But still, Trump is way ahead in the polls. And now to the man desperately trying to catch him. Let's listen to Governor Ron DeSantis. 90 minutes on national television to articulate conservative principles, to show how freedom works and to articulate a path forward for this country, I'm going to take that opportunity. And our justice system has to be able, it has to be able to work to hold him accountable, to have a trial on the January 6th evidence before the next election. It's fundamentally important. And... Um, And I think that, that in particular why this matters so much is because, uh, you know, Donald Trump, he knows, he knows what people have said when they've testified in front of the grand jury. He has all of that information. He knows, he's got all of the transcripts, all of the transcripts from the January 6th committee. He has them. He has all of the evidence. He knows that the people who will testify against him in open court in that January 6th trial are those closest to him. They are people who were the most senior members of his administration, uh, people probably like the vice president, the vice president's counsel, attorney general, the acting attorney general, the head of his campaign. All of the people closest to him will be testifying in open court about what he did, about his culpability, uh, about what he was doing while the attack was happening. Um, you know, he was not only sitting in the dining room next to the Oval Office, watching the attack on television. He, we know he was doing that because of the testimony of individuals inside the White House who were with him. We also know that while that attack was happening, and he was continuing to refuse to tell the mob to leave, we know that he knew the mob was armed when he sent them to the Capitol. And we also know that while the attack was happening, he was handed a note. And the note said on it that a civilian had been shot at the entrance to the chamber of the United States House of Representatives. And we know that when he was handed that note, he put it down on the table in front of him and he continued to watch the attack on television. Now, I don't care if you are a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. That's depravity. And that person can never be near the White House, near the Oval Office again. People often ask me how many Republican members of Congress actually believe Donald Trump's lies. And, you know, I think it, it's like 3.5. I mean, it's really, and, and, <laughs> and you can guess who the 0. 0.5 is. But, it, <laughs> but it's, a, it's a small number. It's a small number. But there are far more uh, of my former colleagues who know the danger. They know that Donald Trump is unfit for office. They know that what he did is in indefensible. Um, but, but they're enabling him and they're collaborating. And, and we know from history, uh, we know from uh, what's happened in other countries at other moments in history when when autocrats, when, when people who have been aspiring to be tyrants, when they have been able to take over, they have to have people collaborate with them. They can't do it by themselves. And, and it can be difficult as Americans to face the reality that, that that is a threat that we now have to defeat in our own country. But it's not only, it, it's certainly necessary to defeat Donald Trump, it is also necessary to defeat the politicians who are collaborating with him and enabling what he's doing.